of steel. Just before the War of the Commonwealth, a massive airship arrived, mooring itself at Boston Airport. This was the command ship of the East Coast chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel, the Pridwin. The Brotherhood, led by Elder Maxon himself, had come to investigate high energy readings coming from the Institute. Not long after the Pridwin's arrival, the War of the Commonwealth began. Initial work on the Pridwin began in 2278 and took six years to complete. Two years for design and to collect the necessary materials, and four more years under actual construction. It was built at Adams Air Force Base in the Capital Wasteland after the Enclave's defeat there. In fact, the Brotherhood salvaged material and technology from the wreckage of the Enclave's mobile base crawler to build the Pridwin, marking the first time the Brotherhood had created something entirely new, instead of just recovering and using existing technology. The Pridwin was named by Maxon after the ship of the legendary King Arthur. Upon completion, the Pridwin weighed 40,000 tons. By the time the airship travels to the Commonwealth, its power plant had been replaced with an updated fusion plant from an old aircraft carrier. The only aircraft carrier known to us in the capital wasteland is Rivet City. Did the Brotherhood forcibly remove the power source for an entire city to power their airship? It seems quite possible that this is the case. The airship itself uses hydrogen to stay aloft and is driven with four propellers at the rear. There are four pylons that are attached to the ship's frame, each with a vertical jet engine that helps keep the ship aloft and maintains altitude. The Pridwin is fully capable of landing, but is much safer remaining aloft, despite the cost and precious cool it needed to remain so. Four vertebrates can be accessed directly from the flight deck, one at each docking hook. The Pridwin is kept aloft by huge hydrogen tanks inside the rigid frame airbag. Hydrogen is notably explosive so the Pridwin itself is not designed for combat. Rather, the Pridwin is an airborne military base serving as a command and control center for both air and land assets of the Brotherhood, extending its reach all up and down the East Coast. It carries enough land and air assets to project force anywhere it's needed. Vertebrate access is granted via two catwalks to the port and starboard. While moving towards the bow of the ship, we can access a ladder that takes us to the command deck. The command deck has three levels. The lowest level is the bridge, where Lance Captain Kells can be found. The middle section is storage, with access to the forecastle, and at the top is Elder Maxon's observation area, which is opposite a ladder that takes you to the main deck. After climbing the ladder, we find ourselves on the main deck, near the officer's quarters. There are stairs going up and down. The stairs going up lead to the living quarters. The stairs going down to a storage area. All other ship business is conducted on this main deck. As we near amidships, we reach the sick bay, where Knight Captain Cade plies his trade. Directly across from sick bay is Proctor Quinlan's office. Proctor Quinlan is in charge of all technology retrieved from the Commonwealth. Moving down the corridor, we pass through the mess hall. Past the mess hall is the engineering bay, where Proctor Ingram reigns supreme. At the extreme aft of the ship is Proctor Teagan, the quartermaster. Below the main deck is an impromptu recreation area, which is a not-so-well-kept secret. 
Above the engineering bay, we find ourselves in the biological research department, where senior scribe Naraya conducts important research for the Brotherhood. We find ourselves going through the main crew quarters underneath the giant hydrogen tanks that keep the ship aloft. Climbing up the stairs from the crew quarters, we can access the bow of the ship. This is the bow of the ship, the most forward point you can reach. Stored here is a long-range sniper rifle for the enjoyment of the crew. The Pridwin is a masterpiece of post-war engineering. It is the first post-war aircraft and a symbol of the power and sheer will of the East Coast Brotherhood. Able to strike quickly and without mercy, the Brotherhood stands ready to save humanity. The Pridwin is a vital tool in this fight. Ad Victorium.